Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We've got a wonderful guest back again today. He's a regular with us. It's the incomparable, famous Will Johnson, the founder of Unite America First, which I urge you to follow, because we do. Welcome back, Will. Glad to be here, Barry. I have spent the morning, my friend, looking at Unite America First. It's a wonderful website. You guys are updating it, it looks like, every 30 minutes. So much stuff to talk about. I had to pick and choose what I thought was most interesting to our viewers today. Let's start with the insanity of boys in girls' sports, men in women's sports, men in women's bathrooms. I thought we were past that, that the outrage was so great with unisex bathrooms and boys self-identifying as girls so they can take showers with the girls after practice. Uh, there's a story that is going around about this uh, guy, Ricky Trez. He's male. He now says he's a she. He entered a pro uh, skateboarding tournament. He won the first prize. Uh, he beat out a 13-year-old girl um, in the open category. Four of the six finalists were girls between the ages of 10 and 17, and he's a grown-up. <laughs> I just don't understand it. He took the money. I saw his picture. He looks like a guy with long hair. So here's what America is now saying. A Washington Post, which is far left, as we all know, has a new survey out saying 60% of Americans oppose girls and boys sports. But it's still happening. Girls are in the bathrooms with boys because the boys are coming in. Same thing in the pool, same thing in a whole lot of sports. When's this insanity going to stop, Will? You know what? If they get their way, it's never going to stop. You know, before it used to be an issue with a grown man, you know, going into the little girl's restroom, they would arrest them. This is straight up pedophilia, and they're trying to make it okay. They're trying to make it be okay. And for anyone targeting children this way, Barry, they should see the inside of a jail cell. Not the inside of the girls' locker room. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm stealing that line. That is brilliant. <laughs> and in one sentence, you have summarized the debate. Please continue. Yeah, seriously. That, th this was happening, but it's like we have this, this blanket statement that, you know, it's just love, right? That's what they say. It's just love, but it's not. Targeting children is not love when you're doing this. This this is this is repulsive to no end. You have woke companies that's pushing this onto children. Look at this. We we discussed that before. And they're not gonna stop. They're they're not gonna stop. It's not in their nature to stop. And it's just increasing. I mean, I'm just waiting for them now to start incorporating uh, animals. You know what? I'm just I, I don't know where they draw the line because you know, if animals aren't okay, what's wrong with you, Will? Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of weird stuff, you know, children younger than 10 were there with their family at a Seattle Pride Parade the other day. And I, this is the truth. They were fully nude paraders on bicycles, men and women. I saw the video uh, going up and down the street um, because it was family day to celebrate pride. And what says family better than a nude guy with his parts dangling in the wind in front of your 10 year old daughter? You know what I mean? Um, and the start of the parade was the Boy Scouts. Um, although I'm not sure who the nude cyclists actually represented. Um, there were signs saying challenge body shaming, build self-esteem. So you've got all these nude people going up and down carrying pride flags, there were some American flags uh, and there were protesters saying that the Roe decision by the Supreme Court was horrible and nothing says protesting um, the abortion decision is better than being naked in front of children. I mean, that's obvious, isn't it? Um, I just don't get it. Uh, but one group was banned from the parade. You know who that was? The Seattle Police Department. <laughs> uh has sanity left the planet, Will? Yeah, yeah. It's it's checked out a while ago. You know, well, there's still a few of us here, but for the most part, these people and, and it's and it's growing. It's like that's the actual virus, if I can say that. That's the actual, that's the actual problem in society. 
that they're that these grown men they're going out there and you know what the grown men out there showing their shaking their tails showing their private parts and these grown men they really don't want the little girls they can care less if the little girls see it but they want the little boys to see it this is so demonic it's so sickening you, it, us even having this conversation about it, talking about it, I'm, it's like we're trying to wrap our minds around it. Are we actually talking about grown men shaking their rump in front of little boys, children, period, out on the street? Yeah, we actually are. The year 2022, and we've gone backwards to the Stone Age. <laughs> and, <laughs> because and, they and didn't have clothes in the Stone Age, right? You know, they just the had part, leaves. The, the part you didn't address was, Will, this was a family event. Oh, it my was goodness. bring your children because the entertainment is for children. You know what? I went to a, I went to an event and I was actually covering it when I was in uh, Minneapolis one time. And it was actually in Minnesota. And they were they had a family event where they the the parents brought their kids to watch these dragon queens dance before them and even take money and put it in there, whatever. And I went over there and I was, I was saying, you know, this is pretty much disgusting. And across the street were some street pastors or street preachers. You know, they get on a bullhorn and they tell people they're going to hell. So, I, I mean, I don't agree getting on a bullhorn doing that. They don't need them to tell them they're going to hell. They can do, they're already going to find out on their own. But the point is, I said that all the pedophiles, the people who support pedophilia is on this side. Where the where they, they call the family event. Well, they were getting angry with me because they said it was, how dare you? You calling all of us pedophiles? I said, no, I don't know you personally. But what I'm saying is that everyone who supports pedophilia is on this side. Because it's it's repulsive. I mean, it is. I can't say that word enough. It's wild, and you're right. If you said it 50 times, it wouldn't describe the extent <laughs> of my disgust. And obviously you share yeah. it with me as well. So I got a wild one for you. I mean, we know that the Roe v. Wade decision uh, of the court has um, canceled uh, federal guarantees for access to abortion and has returned it to the states. So the states will vote state by state by state whether there should be or shouldn't be uh, abortion uh, protection uh, on a state level. 26 states have already weighed in, um, filing amicus briefs with the Supreme Court saying that they uh, support the Supreme Court decision to overturn Wade, Roe v. Wade. And the other 24 states, which is the minority, uh, have various degrees of access to abortion that will now be litigated and uh, legislated. Here's, here's a wild one. Uh, a number of um, goofy people led by AOC have proposed, get this, that Joe Biden declare by executive order because this would never pass the legislature, that the federal owned natural parks, national parks, coast to coast, be declared abortion sites. And AOC is proposing that Biden declare he will build with federal money abortion clinics in the national parks, thereby sidestepping the decision of the Supreme Court, meaning this is what's going to happen because the federal government is now going to do this to bypass what the courts decided. Is this going to happen? Is that really possible? You know what? If that happens, that just means that there, there are no checks and balances when it comes to our federal government. That's the reason why we have three branches of the federal government. The very reason, because if if one or two of them get out of hand and hopefully, hopefully one of them will keep everything in order. And that's exactly what's happening here. And you know what, Barry, my question about them putting, you know, if they're going to put these these abortion clinics in these in, in the national parks, isn't that going to destroy trees? Isn't that going to destroy the beauty of it? Isn't it oh. the isn't it the whole point why they was that like they're screaming, "Don't drill in these"? No, no, <laughs> Will, you don't understand. Nothing <laughs> says environmental protection like killing babies. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, I, I don't understand why you don't get it. It's so obvious to me. And you know what? I, I it just. <laughs> I, it's so, it's just <laughs> exactly. Well, you know what? You should. You should stay on uh, AOC's Twitter account. Things will be explained to you and you'll be a more informed young man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. <laughs> so United America First, your website, 
and this is a real wild story and I don't know what to make of it. So I really need you to explain it. This is potentially terrifying. You, you reported that after 20 years of fighting wars in um, army vehicles painted to match the desert for camouflage, Fort Hood now has a bunch of vehicles that are being painted olive green. They actually, the army is calling it woodland green and it's a camouflage for fighting in different environments. Uh, apparently this signals a switch in readiness from fighting in arid places like the Middle East to fighting in more verdant regions, such as where there's green grass and trees and rich vegetation. Uh, there's a hint out of Great Britain where one of the commanders of the army said their army must be, quote, trained to I, let me say it exactly right. We are the generation that must train the army to fight in Europe once again. Are they signaling to us where the next war will be? I think so. And the reason I think that's coming about is because, you know, about a month ago, they were saying that Putin was upset. I'm pretty sure you've seen that, that he's angry because he's not making headway. Well, guess what? Putin is making headway. And they're upset about it. And the only way to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine completely is to, you know, and I'm tying it in because the only way to do it is to put American soldiers on the ground. That's the only way to do it. So now they're talking about taking soldiers, American soldiers, sending them over to Europe to engage in this war. So there, I think it's I think it's inevitable and I think it's coming because we technically we're already at war with Russia. Ukraine is just a proxy. That's all that is. And then, you know, Biden, he's talking to Emmanuel Macron and uh, uh, other uh, European leaders about what they can do. I'll tell you what, your article is really scary stuff because if that spreads, Will Johnson, they have telegraphed where we are sending men and material yeah. next. Yeah. And you don't send jeeps and trucks and tanks camouflaged in green to the desert it shows right. by yeah. satellite you yeah. send those kinds of vehicles and those kinds of colors into the green areas where there are trees and foliage and yep. you're right i am be honest with you i'm surprised they didn't paint them in the rainbow colors i'm just saying <laughs> I'm just saying with this administration. <laughs> well, you know what? It wouldn't be camouflage, but it would show support. Yeah, yeah. Hey, they're they're already doing the bullets that way. <laughs> I know. I saw that. That's amazing. Punch in findberry.com into your browser. It'll take you to americantruthproject.org. You can sign up to be on our mailing list. You'll get all of our shows like this one with the fabulous Will Johnson. Just today, I'm Barry Newsbaum.